Okay, Kai. My name is Leslie Kuluoyo. Aloha. Come and join me as we visit the shorelines of Maui. Aloha aho mai kai iya ke akua. Blessed is he. No ka aina ame na ai iya o ke kai. For the land and the things that can be eaten from the ocean. No ka aina ame na mea ola o ke kai. For the land and survival of the sea. Aloha Makena, Makupuna in this area, Kiavalai, a beautiful Makena church. The Kupuna who have taught me how to live and survive by the ocean. Okay, Kai, the ocean in back of me, and to the Kupuna of Makena, Mahalo, for teaching me everything about the Kai, the ocean. The Pohako, the Ia, Makena Landing, Ku Makena, Popoke, Aava, Mahalo Milo, Kupuna, or Makena, here at the Honoaula District on Maui, in the southern part of our beautiful Maui, Mokaoi. This is one of Makena's local Ia fish ponds. Right now the tide is real malo'o, real dry and perfect to observe the area, to Nana. I remember my uncle John Luwai here from Makena. When we were children, he used to tell us, come to Upena boy, and when you're ready, you run across this uh, papa over here, this Alatapa rock. And so we used to grab the Upena, he said, go! So we run across and the other children used to pai pai inside. Pai pai means to slap and chase all the fish. The fish here, the ear, would be veke. And they would hay right into the uh, net, the upena. And we had a lot of fun. We caught a lot of fish. You'd be surprised, enough for the family. I remember one incident, we had a jeep load, a trailer load of one net full of upena, full of fish in the upena with veke inside. And so, to that kupuna, John Luai, mahalo for teaching us how to run the open across and to get our feet all bust up and get our feet all scratch and cut. But at least we had the experience of knowing what it is to fish in local eaters for like this. And mahalo no ilo to Yukupuna for everything. Papai. Papai means crab in Hawaiian. And down here we have two types of crab, papai. One is the aama and one the paiea. Right before me here, we can see the kai coming in. Right now we can see the nalo kind of shaping up. And the papai tends to crawl on this a'a -a type of rock, or the pahoi hoi. Today it's very low tide, malo'o. So as the papai walks around the puhako, a'a -a type of rock, they eat on the limo. And beautiful, you can see the papai here on the rock during the day, or here in Makena, we catch it during the night been at a dark, dark, dark night. And so, we have also places like this in the white area, where you see, we also catch the beautiful moi. Beautiful eating fish, real tasty and ono. And so one who would be carrying his upena kiloi would watch for the schools of moi inside the white area here, either during the low or high tide, and start throwing his net, upena kiloi. Upena means a net, Kiloi means to throw right into the white area here. How nice, how beautiful for a, a via kanaka, a fisherman, to come down here to fish. The kohola whales were abundant during the ancient times. And I have a kupuna, John Kokohiko, who was well versed and knowledgeable in the ocean itself. Some say that John Kukahiko took the whaling ships out here in the ocean here between Kaholawe, Molokini, Lanai, and helped the whalers to find 
or locate the kohola, the whales. Some say that whenever he took the whaling ships out, the sea would be calm. Or what mana, or perhaps Okiakua gave him the special talent and know-how and all the experience. I wish I could have been there with my kupuna, John Kukahiko. My ohana at the Makena Landing and my kupuna depended on this area for the akuli. And the akuli would come inside and the old folks would just lay the upena, pick up the akuli the next morning and share it with all the village people here. That was the old way, to share the akuli, the catch, the fish. Another thing I can remember is that just recently I had an uncle called Abna Dilima, who has taught me, my kupuna. Right in back of me on this point here, we have what you call, where the mano sleeps, the shark. And so as he and I swam across from Makena Landing to this point here, he told me to go down to look for one veke, a type of fish. And when I did go down, going into this hole with the ili ili on the bottom, here came one mano coming out. And my heart almost died on me. And as I looked up to him, looking down at me from above the surface, I could see a lot of bubbles coming out from his, his uh, mouthpiece. And he was laughing at me. And perhaps he wanted me to have that experience for the first time facing one, Mano. So to you, Uncle Ebna Dilima, mahalo nui loa for teaching me Hawaiian survival and the sea. Nana, to observe. I sit here at Alika, Kalai o Alika, and I observe all these cherished memories that I looked in the past, that which was taught to me, ao, that I've learned. Loko ia Alika, as I see your reflection, and I view Makena, and the Kai, Malie. As I also look at Kiavakapu, Kalai o Kupuna in Mahalamuilo. Nana, look, observe, and learn. Ako. O Kupuna, o Makena. Aloha. Kiavalai. Aloha. your hands, your limb, your Hawaii. Look onto the horizon, watch the Nala flow, become Malia. How good it is. Oh, we, the Eki. Welcome to Lili Kapa. Mahalo, Kekai. Here we have the Pauki Uki. Some people call it Uki Uki, Haui Ui on Maui. It's purplish in color. You have the Niho, which is the teeth inside. The Iho, the meat is yellow. Very delicious. Good to mix it with your, your Akuli, Malini. Mix it up, Lomi with your Kukui in the Mona. Mmm, delicious. Over here we have what you call the Makui Kui, Opihi, yellow in meat. And also, 
you can see the limo palahalaha, which is the sea lattice attached to it. This ground here just happened that Puhaku over there had about might be 150 of these sizes. I left the rest so that I just brought back enough for me to eat. This I love to do down at the ocean. I can cook here my own boopihi. Eat the limpid shell, the opihi shell. Eat the meat and survive. Give me moisture. Sometimes the green limo. La plahalaha, limo plahalaha. You can eat it like lettuce. It's like a vegetable at your dinner table. And you can really have a meal with the hokey hokey again. Six or seven would be just right. Just put your middle finger inside. Put them inside here. And get the meat out. Oh, I love to do it. Every time I eat one, I want to eat some more. A hundred. This area here is called Lelekava. The point here at Lelekava. It's in the point near to Lower Paia town on Maui. And Lelekawa has been an old place where our kupuna of old also come here to fish and to get whatever they can from the kahakai. The hauki hauki, makui kui, koele, boopihi, all those things, limo, kohu, whatever the area has to give them. The kupuna came here and just made use. They took enough so that they could share the rest for the Ara Ohana. Also we have here, my picked up was pee, pee, pee What we can do to survive, if anytime you're down in the ocean, all this pee, pee, pee in my hand, and the opihi that I have caught in a short time, would make a meal. Put this into a can, or a pot, boil it, put some paakai, some salt on top, and you make soup, opihi soup with pee pee And that will be just right. Ono, delicious Hawaiian soup, straight from the sea. Even when we're children, we learn about the ocean in different ways, how to catch a fish. We learn of the upena kiloi, the tronet. We also have to learn how to nana, to look and observe the ear, below the kai. How to fix our upena, making sure that when we throw, we're ready to catch the ear, the fish. The grab, we observe. We even have to learn how to walk. Well, sometimes we can experience the word we call pakika. Sometimes we will hooli into this kahaka, this pond without looking. We have to become not excited, keeping an eye on the ear, watching the nalo, even watching the limo. Sometimes you can pakika, you can fall. Watch the nalo, the keki. Watch the ear as we draw closer. Keep an eye on the ear. Watch your step, the keki. Get ready. Be very quiet. Because the ear can hear you. Throw.
cool little coast here on Maui. And this beautiful setting is called Father Jules Papa. The Papa here has a lot to offer again. And today we share with one of our kupunas, my mom, who is very ma'a with the kai. And always going down to the kai to kahakai. Holo holo. And so let us turn to my mom, one of Maui's Bokupunas here, and see what she did after going to the Kahakai. She speaks and says about the sea and what it has to offer. And she talks about if you go down to the beach and look around, turning over the pohakus, perhaps you'll see the sea animals, the sea life, where one may survive. The sea cucumber, the ake ake limo, even the limo color. The kupuna here begins to open on a lot of her eke. Look at her eke. So much uh, things that she uh, picked while she came down about an hour ago. And she tried to make use of all of what she caught. No waste to take home to her family. This type, this type here is called the opihi papapa, flat, flat in shape, very flat in shape. And this is here the makui kui, yellow in color. How do you okay. Yeah, how do you ah, then she also says that this is called the hauliuli, usually found during the night or during the high, high areas of the uh, reef areas here. And so she calls this the hauliuli. Up here? Ah, the okala, ah, pili, pili okalima. The rat's food, green, uh, uh, very much uh, and very abundant in this area here. She's now doing the sea cucumber, the loli. She's going to scrape it and take off all that uh, slime on the other part of the sea cucumber until it becomes keo keo white. She now takes out the uh, yellow, the yellowish portion of the uh, intestines of the sea cucumber. And when we were ch uh, children, we were fed this, uh, they would just put it into our mouths like this. Mm. Very good. Mm. Mahalo. She tore off one of the sea urchins called the hauki uke. Hauki uke, similar to the vana, the sea urchin, the baby sea urchin, mm, yellowish in meat, mm. running one's finger through the inside of its shell, the ivy, mm, you will collect all the meat with your small finger and put it right into your mouth. Delicious, very honor. If you're used to it, born 
and raised with the seafoods around you. She then opens a limpid shell with another limpid shell, the opihi. Then she plucks it out. Okay, man. I oh no. I. She now takes a uh, look into her bag and brings out the hauki uki. Family to the sea urchin. It walks on the bottom of the floor, collects its seafood, its life, its uh, food from the ocean floor. She then tears it out and she shows you in the white portion, which is called the niho. The niho is similar to what we call the teeth, the niho. With her fingers, as she explains, she'll run it through the ivy, the shell of the haokioki eye. Then she eats the iho, the yellow meat. Kind of mele mele, yellow in color. Very delicious. Oh no, eh? Kubuna. Hmm. Mahalo. This is, she have in her hand called the aama. Paiea means crab. Aama is the crab that she holds in her hand. She took out the back and a little Hawaii okupuna honey. The stomach is, is real fat, as she says, and the eggs is, uh, you can see the eggs are lying in the back. And she tries to eat the eggs of the uh, ama crab. She then tries to show how one would tear off its back, starting from the front, between the eyes, between the maka, and turn back. Then you'll see the portion of the ama crab separate from the body. The yellow portion, she now run her uh, lima through her fingers, mana mana lima, is yellowish in color with more eggs. And she'll probably want to eat it too. One could survive, uh, one could survive on eating the paella. She then, if she's uh, still hungry at sea, one could continue to just Eat the paia crab, rinse it into the kai, using it as salt, and just uh, merely chewing on it. Ah, kupuno hini. Yeah, yo, papa. She just says that she's gonna take out all the legs, where she can have an easy time chewing it. She then squeezes the legs together, bringing out the white meat of the crab. Then she'll try to break it in half into two pieces where one would be easy to chew on it. Uh, she then breaks uh, the vavai, the legs, away. Then, next thing to do is eat the paella. Or the aama crab, ai. Mahalo. Here on Maui, we're very fortunate to have the different types and varieties of seaweed, limo. Before you, I have a few of it to explain why is the limo, the seaweed, so important to the fishermen, Kanaka Lavaia. For example, the limo color. Edible, picking up the young, small, okala limo, limo color. You'll be able to eat this limo, just by chewing on it to give you moisture. Again, if one would have a injury to his leg, a uh, minor cut or bruise, by chewing on the limo color, one could apply it to the injury, or the injured sore, or a cut. Let it sit, dry out by the sun, and this would serve as what we will call a quick antibiotics to any injury on your arm or wherever you might get hurt down at the beach. The alani, akiaki, mostly found throughout the islands here in Hawaii. The akeake grows wild. Uh, 
it is edible. It's not the choices of limo here on Maui, but it's edible. And if there is no other limo during the season time, the aki, aki, aki can be used, chopping it up, and also could be applied for injury or sores. And mahalo nui lo, the aki, aki is brown because of the sun. This is dark in color. Some of it turns into very yellow or orange in color. So this is the aki, aki limo here at Father Jules Papa. We have what we call now other limos like the limo vavaiole, the rat's foot. Very abundant, plentiful here on this coastline. Other limos such as limo ekahakaha, limo lipepe, limo palahalaha, limo pakanaka, limo huluhuluvaina, limo manowea, limo maneoneo, and on and on and on. And so today we come and share with you to what this certain coastline here on Maui, the Hamakua coastline, has so much to offer with survival. And so, mahalo, kupuna wahine. Thank you for sharing your, your time uh, down here with the uh, coming down to the Kahakai. And I thank you so much for uh, your time in teaching me about survival and the sea.